Hello, I'm Dr. Rich Blake, and I'm here giving a video post for Dr. Blake's Healing Soul. I'd like to talk today about the orthotic modifications that we do on the cast correction themselves for supinators. Uh, there's a lot of corrections that you would put onto an orthotic device itself, like a high lateral heel cup, a lateral flange, an extended lateral post, a dentin modification. But those are all things that you put on the orthotic itself. But today I'd like to talk about what the lab does in taking the mold of the patient and transforming that into a correction that would help for supination. So I'd like to start and show you two uh, positive casts. So these are two different patients. Uh, the first patient here in yellow, uh, these are both left feet, and the patient uh, had their cast taken. Uh, when the doctor examined them, they found that they had a slight forefoot varus, forefoot valgus deformity. Uh, so it's just very, very minor. Uh, you can see it's actually just, uh, if you try to get the heel straight on this, we would have to center it a few degrees uh, in one direction. So it's, it's pretty neutral where the heel is, uh, is pretty, pretty straight up and down. Now this is another patient who has a high degree of forefoot valgus. So when you, after you take the cast and you set the cast on the ground, you can see how inverted. Now this is a sort of your classic foot that tends to supinate. Uh, it's that 10 to 20 percent of patients that, that intrinsically in their foot, they have a lot of supination problems. And it is good to correct that out because supination is very da dangerous for a patient. So these are two patients with their left foot. Now, um, what I'd like to show is three cast modifications. Now, in the patient that has a high degree of forefoot valgus, so that when, after you pour the cast and you let it fall down, you'll see it roll to the outside. So in that type of patient, you can use the classic root balance technique. This is a, a cast technique that, that uses what we call an anterior platform, and that platform holds the foot level. So when you put the cast down on the ground, this, and these are the same feet, you can see the, the tendency to lean to the outside has been leveled off, and now the foot is being set straight. So that's called a, a root balanced orthotic. After uh, famous Dr. Merton Root, who invented this, these techniques in the 1970s and 1960s. So with the classic root balance technique, the cast is balanced to vertical. Uh, Whatever is in the cast, the med you have three arches, of course. You have a metatarsal arch, you have a lateral arch, and you have a, a medial arch. And those are, um, are uh, kept as, as well as you can so that there's less distortion. You have to put a little bit of expansion into the mold um, because uh, uh, the, the, the foot does flatten as it steps on it and you can't have too many sharp edges. So you have what we call a medial expansion uh, or a lateral uh, expansion. But that's your classic uh, root balance technique. It's, it's a great foot for supinators, a great type of cast correction I should say for supinators when they have a high degree of forefoot valgus and what, what we call an everted forefoot deformity, one that tends to roll out. Forefoot valgus does that, uh, plantar flex first ray does that, dorsiflexed fourth and fifth metatarsals does that. Um, and you also know that there are foot types that aren't uh, tilted but have terrible tendencies to supinate uh, because of rear foot varus, uh, lateral
lateral ankle instability, uh, unstable cuboids, etc. So now the next three cast techniques are uh, variations of the root technique. Uh, vari this variation uh, is also balanced to vertical. So you can see the heel has been set at vertical. Uh, so that part is the same as our classic root balance technique. But we've added to it uh, several things that help control supination. We've made the orthotic a little bit narrower. That, that's a simple little correction. So now the arch on the inside is not going to push up so as hard so that the outside arch correction has more power. We're also going to round this what we call lateral expansion so that when, the, when you press the orthotic device, uh, the press the plastic, it's going to grab the foot better. And so that just that little simple technique can make a huge difference. And then you do what is called a lateral Kirby. Dr. Kevin Kirby from Sacramento, California invented the Kirby Sky. It was first described for the medial side of the heel for pronators, but now has been popularized at, uh, at being a great technique for supinators. And it's, it basically, you find the contact point of, of the heel where it's at the lowest point, and then you make a smooth sort of rounding of that. And you can see the difference in the Kirby versus the, the root balance, where the Kirby sky is more rounded here, and the regular root expansion of the heel is flatter. So this is going to grab the, the side of the foot that is going to control uh, supination better. So type, so type E of my multiple cast corrections is, is a root balance, and then we add a lateral Kirby, and we add a lateral phalange, what we call a lateral column correction, where, where you're using whatever you have laterally and, and you're going to try to get, a, get an orthotic that grabs the foot better. Now, the next two techniques are a modification of the root. Uh, this is called an everted orthotic. And basically, the, in these cases, the supination is very severe. Uh, you, 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 you find that if you just set the cast level or, or vertical, the foot still supinates off the device. So in these two cases, we're actually going to take the cast and set it everted about five degrees. The goal, remember, is to hold the heel straight up and down, but the force that we need has to be uh, a greater, greater force for, say, somebody with tibial varum, uh, lateral ankle instability, cuboid instability, perineal weakness, a lot of, uh, there's, there's a, you know, and, and even soft shoes or worn out shoes, there, there, are shoe, there are problems both with the shoes and with the upper extrem the upper part of the, uh, above the foot that can dictate that you need to have more force and actually evert the foot. So, so these two are set at five degrees everted. So, uh, and the correction G is five degrees everted. We're going to still do our lateral column correction with our rounded expansion, and we're going to do our uh, Kirby Skive laterally and then we're also going to make our narrower orthotic. The difference between that and, oh, I'm sorry, that's the, uh, that's the highest one, G. F is uh, the same, it's five degrees everted, but without the, too much of the rounding and without the sky. So you have a little rounding, a li no, no Kirby sky, you just, you're just trying to, uh, you know, grab the foot more on the lateral side because you have uh, everted at five degrees. So F correction is basically a five degree with, 
with a lateral column correction without the Kirby. Uh, G, which is your highest correction for supinators that I've done, uh, is a five degree everted pour, lateral column correction, and then lateral Kirby. So I hope this helps you understand that uh, even though there are shoes that help with supinators, there's things that you can do to a plastic orthotic to help with supinators. There's also techniques within the, uh, the cast itself that, that, that the, the prescribing doctor or therapist wants to ask the lab to do that will help generate the, a force that stops that abnormal motion. Now what does supination do? Supination is so bad that it can cause ankle sprains, it can cause chronic stress fractures, it can cause medial compartment of the knee uh, to uh, break down, it can cause uh, back pain, it can cause hip pain like IT band or, uh, or just hip, hip joint jamming, uh, any type of joint jamming problems with hip or knee. Uh, a lot of times that can be in supinators. So it's a very deforming force. Uh, the patient hits the ground. And instead of pronating slightly, they, they roll out, and that causes a myriad of compensations and problems that can lead uh, to a, a lot of different pain syndromes. So I hope this little introduction to uh, orthotic corrections that can help with supinators uh, has been helpful for you uh, or to the orthotic lab that is working with your, your doctor to, uh, to help your uh, particular case. Thank you very much.